Have you ever felt like the weight of the world is completely on your shoulders and has nothing to do with you, but more to do with your parents? So on this episode, we're going to talk about your parents' trauma is just not your trauma. This is The Kristen Ann Show, New York licensed social worker and board certified life coach. I just want to help you explore different ways to think. Thanks so much for tuning in. You know what's funny? I thought that I was going to like go into episodes that were like more lighthearted when I first made the idea that I wanted to do a podcast and I'm just like flooding the gates, <laughs> flooding the gates of like really serious topics that I feel like not a lot of people either want to think about or talk about. So <laughs> here we go. On this episode, we're talking about your parents' trauma is not your trauma. And again, a little heavy of an episode, but I think it's a really good topic to discuss. Now, I really want you to know with the podcast that that I make, these episodes that I do make, I just want you to start to think. I don't want you to do anything, just think. And it's not like, oh my God, it's on Kristen's podcast or her episode or whatever. I have to do it. Why am I not like doing this or doing that? Like, that's not what this podcast is about. It's about giving you information and maybe thinking a little more differently than you may have thought before. Now, this topic is a little bit more, I guess you can say serious because it's about parents and parents' trauma and issues and how it affects us in a way. I first want to dive deep into my experience with this and how I feel like my father's trauma really was put onto me. And I don't want to speak about my sisters because they're not here to speak about it. And one day we will definitely do a podcast with them on here. But for now, I'm just going to speak about my experiences and how I think that my father's trauma and issues have affected me in probably childhood, well, definitely in childhood, and now more so as an adult. I will definitely get into more details about the relationship between my father and I, which is right now non-existent. But for now, I want to focus on this episode about his traumas that he had had endured and how I feel like I have endured some of that as well. So stay tuned at the end of the episode because I'm going to give you guys some ideas and suggestions of how to deal with this if you have a parent, if you if you are kind of enduring a parent's trauma and issues and you may not even realizing realize that you are. Um, So stay tuned for the end of the episode. If you're not, that's amazing. But you might know somebody that actually is going through this. So just share the episode with them and hopefully they'll get some suggestions and ideas of how to handle it for themselves. So let's go all the way back. I'm going to see me like into like the 1950s. I have no idea when my dad was born, but I'm pretty sure it was in the 50s. Mom, if you're listening, please let me know if I am botching his birth year. I am not sure. I'm going to say it's in, it's in the 50s because I believe I'll... I really don't know his age. I think it's around, I'm going to say he's almost 70 now. I'm going to say. I have no idea. My dad was the oldest of two siblings. Um, He lived with his mother, my nanny, and his father. And I wouldn't even call him my grandfather because I never met him. So he lived with his siblings, two siblings. He was the oldest. And uh, his mom and his dad, just like I said, I'm just repeating myself. And my... <laughs> My father really endured a lot of, many years, I'm, I don't even know how many years he endured physical and mental abuse from his dad. And I feel like, and from my understanding, that he endured a lot of the abuse because one, he was the oldest, and two, because, again, my understanding was that he defended everybody in the family, so he would get the brunt of um, his dad's anger. So let me paint you a picture of my own childhood growing up, I was completely spoiled. My father gave us everything. Um, We lived in a beautiful home. He had a great business that he was running. My mom was home at the time, I believe. Mom, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, But we really did have a great life when we were younger. Now, obviously, that, that was different for him when he was younger. And what it seemed like happened for him was that He had all of this mental and physical abuse that, again, to my understanding, that he never really, that he never really addressed, didn't go to therapy, um, really didn't talk about it that much. It seemed like he really suppressed 
a lot of it down to where he tried not to remember. Um, and what it seemed like happened for him was that he then turned all of that into, well, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to be extremely successful, which he did. He he opened up his own electrical business that I, I, I have no idea where it is today. I have no idea. Um, but for many, many years, he ran a very successful business that thrived for a while until it didn't. Now, again, these are my own accounts of what I believe did happen because, first of all, if I ever even asked my dad, I don't think I could, could ever get a straight answer from him. Um, so this is, again, this is just my account of, of the events that had, that had happened years ago. So going back again years ago, um, he endured all of this abuse, verbal um, and physical, from his father. And it seemed like he just wanted to turn things around and not end up the way that his father was. And unfortunately, and, and I remember my mom telling me this, that he actually then turned himself into his dad because he never addressed the issues in his childhood. So let me make this very, very clear. Anybody listening to this that has endured anything in their past or now, if you do not ever address them, they're going to come up again. It may take a couple of years. It may take like a decade, but it's probably going to come up some way, somehow. If it, you just, just think about it. If you push something all the way down, all the way down, all, all the way down, let's say like for the body, we push it all the way down to our toes. Sooner enough, sooner rather than later, things are just going to keep on building up because it's like pressing so hard and there's so much there that it's going to explode one day. And I think it took my dad a long time for it for this to kind of like unravel for him because eventually we had no money, we had no business, and it kind of just like went poof out of nowhere and not really knowing what really happened. And I think I can speak to speak for my sisters on this one like it was always just like a state of confusion of you know, having money and then not having money. Funny little story, when we were younger, even when we got a little bit older, he would have this Bible in his house and he would have like loads of cash in it, like ones, tens, fifties, hundreds. So we would just go in and just take whatever we wanted. Was that the right thing to do? Probably not, but you know, we took it. We were younger and really didn't know any better and probably did it when I was a little bit older too. That probably shouldn't have not done that as well. But we would go from having st stacks of cash in this Bible to not having money, like, or couldn't do things. So things were always so confusing. And if you're, conf from, my, from my experience, being confused as a child really didn't set things up so great for me as, as an adult because things weren't really explained to me of how things worked. So... I just thought like, oh, poof, money will just come. And like, I don't have to really do that many things. <laughs> it's not true. You actually have to do work. You have to really work your ass off to get to where you want to go. So things changed when we got older. And I felt the shift of it. Probably the earliest memory I have was probably like 15. And we, when we had more of opinions, obviously, when we, we were younger, probably had more opinions than obviously not just starting at 15, but I was noticing the anger and like the impatience of him that would come up when we would just have differences of an, of, of an opinion. And that's what happens, right? You kind of get older and you have a say. I, I have a seven-year-old nephew that has a lot of opinions, whom I love so much, but like he has an opinion and that's okay, right? But the issue was that my father never really addressed his own stuff so he couldn't really handle the fact that we had opinions and issues coming along in, in our own lives. So I, I believe the issues that he never resolved that we, I, well, I want to say I, I took on for myself was anxiety, um, issues with money, um, unstable relationships, like an unstable, unhealthy way of looking at how love is supposed to be. This is a very good point here about <laughs> the way that love is supposed to be. Just side note, and this would probably would be another episode, but love is not supposed to be unstable and inconsistent. It's supposed to be kind and consistent and never makes you feel confused. That's just a sidebar. 
So the issues that my dad had in regards to like handling money, managing money, um, his, his anxiety, um, really, I kind of imprinted on me. And I took that on into childhood, into adulthood. And was very difficult for me to really manage like money and relationships. Like I never was in a, I never was in a toxic relationship, but I know the the relationships that I was in before that, the one that I am with, with, with my husband was not the greatest. It was not toxic, but it wasn't the greatest relationship that I knew that I could have been in, but just seeking that attention from other people that probably didn't want to give it to me. So yeah, I really do I I really do feel his issues that he had never resolved came up and kind of imprinted on me. And I'm sure my sisters as well. But again, I'm just going to speak about myself. Issues with money, relationships. Um the instability with maybe like jobs and stuff like that. But here's here's my thing. This is what I wanted to talk to you guys about was we all have stories, we all have a childhood. Some of our childhoods could be amazing. Some of ours could have been completely terrible. It is not your fault what has happened to you in the past, but it is your responsibility to now do something about it. So yeah, no, of course, it was not my father's fault that he was abused as a child because that's the parent, right? And the parent is older and the parent is supposed to be wiser and supposed to nurture and care for your children. So no, it wasn't my dad's fault that he was abused as a child, but it was his responsibility that responsibility that if he wanted to have three kids, that he should have really dug deep and figured out, okay, how do I fix what had happened to me like on the inside right now in the present moment? Because I couldn't, we can't go back into the past. We can only fix what's happening right now. So it was his responsibility to say, you know what? I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't want to treat my children like that. So let me do X, Y, and Z, whatever that might be for him. Now for you listening to this now, if you do have a parent that you feel like may not be the best to be around or might be just too toxic for you, this is where you say to yourself, okay, you know what, it's not my fault what had happened in the past, but it is my responsibility now to say, you know what, I don't think this is the right relationship for me. And I know it's really hard to say, oh my God, is this relationship that I do have with a parent is not healthy. And that's a very, very hard thing to realize and to say, or even to admit to yourself that maybe I do need to walk away. And now we're going to... um. Please hold. We're going to do the grass. We're going to do the grass right now. Son of a bitch. We're mowing the grass right now. That's great. That's fucking fantastic. <sighs> My question is to you, how much are you going to let whatever your parent trauma is to let it affect you? And here is the hard truth is that we all have a choice. We all have a choice to say, you know what, this relationship is just not working for me. Or maybe we can kind of work on this because my parent is is pretty, um, is a good communicator. I know I can tell this to them and say, listen, I know that this had happened to you in the past, but like, I feel like it's being brought up now. And for us to have a better relationship, how can we make this better? Remember, your parents' trauma It is not your trauma to carry around. We do as adults have enough things to carry around that we can't feel responsible to carry that around as well. So you're probably asking yourself, okay, Chris, and I listened to your experience and different things that that had happened with you and your family. How the hell are you going to help me with my family? Again, this is not an easy topic, but... If you're listening to this, you're listening to this for for a reason. There's a there's a reason why you might be listening to this thinking, okay, so the relationship that I do have with my with my parent is not healthy. And one of the ways that you could kind of gauge this is the same thing that I said back in the other episode about friendship. Let's say you go out and you hang out with them or you're in the same room with them, where, wherever you are, if you live with them, if you don't live with them. But anytime you kind of leave them, you're getting this type of energy of like, you're depleted, you're tired, you don't feel the greatest. Now, if you do have a 
somewhat of a good good relationship with your parent, you might come home and feel like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit tired because they, they could be exhausting sometimes, but like they're a good person. So like, love you so much. I'll see you on, I'll see you in two weeks. Do you know what I mean? And it's okay to set up, set up these boundaries here, even if you do have a close relationship with your parent. So you don't have to just set up boundaries if you have a toxic relationship. It's okay to set up boundaries even um, on both sides, toxic relationship or just a healthy relationship. Boundaries are always good to put in place. So here are a couple of things that you guys can do right now if you feel like you need to put up some boundaries with the parent. Obviously, number one is actually setting up the boundary. So maybe not talking to them every day. Maybe you bring it down to like once a week. And I think it's really good to have open communication with that parent if you can and say, hey, listen, you know what? You know, I love you and I I love our relationships, but I feel like I feel this way when you do this. So I'm going to bring down the times that we talk to like once a week. Is that okay for you? Like see what they say. Obviously, if you've been doing this for a long time, it may not be the, they might not feel the greatest. But again, you need to take care of yourself, protect yourself. Another thing that I did with my situation, I completely stopped talking to my father a couple of years ago, but then made it very known to my two two sisters a year ago that I wasn't going to be involved with anything. So if you have siblings, I would suggest let them know what page you are you are on with that parent. Like, hey, I'm going to be here if you if you need me or I can't do this anymore. It's going to be either my mental health or the relationship that I have with this person. So I'm going to choose my mental health over that. So letting the siblings know, know I think, is a very good um, next step. And if you are in a situation like me with a completely completely unhealthy relationship with a parent, and this is really hard to say, but maybe you just need to walk away. And this was not easy for me to do. Yes, it's easy for me to talk about right now. Because I've been on this journey with this for a number of years. I tried and I tried. um, And I knew the benefit of me walking away was better than just staying in this relationship. Knowing that I wasn't going to get what I knew I needed and what what I knew I deserved. So it was time for me to cut ties. And you might feel like it's time for you to cut ties. And I'm just saying, and if you're listening, it's okay if you have to do that. If you're in a different relationship with your parent where you love them to death and you just need some time away from them sometimes, that's okay. I would suggest and focus on the good in your relationship with that person because whatever you focus on is always going to come into your life. So focusing on the good on your relationship I think would be the best next step for a person in a healthy relationship with their parent. But obviously this episode is like mostly about like the unhealthy people dad (laughs) so to wrap this up my friends your it's not your responsibility to take care of your parents trauma and issues yes you want to be there for them if they are healthy for you absolutely be there for them love them and pay attention to them on the flip side like on my side if it's extremely toxic you have to say i think it's time for me to cut ties with this I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode of Your Parents' Trauma is Just Not Your Trauma. Bye, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, please like, share, follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Also, come follow me on Instagram, underscore Kristen, underscore Anne 88. And if you're ready to take the next step because you fucking deserve it, come take a look at my website on Instagram. 